on the record with Vince wow. Herman, and he's got a story for us here. Now it's uh, today's date is September. Uh, something or other. We uh, we're driving from Colorado to to our show here in Arcadia tonight, and uh, stopped in Reading last night, and woke up with uh, a banjo, accordion, dobro, and guitar stolen out of the back of our car. And uh, you know, called the cops to get the insurance all taken care of and all that stuff. And, you know, I just kind of had an inkling that our stuff was across the street in this warehouse where there was uh, blatant uh, scoff law activity going on. Huh. And uh, we went over and through, through the process of kind of talking to the folks, we figured out they knew exactly what we were looking for and uh, it was probably inside that building. Hmm. And we waited for three hours for the police to come. It didn't happen. Man. We finally left town. And, uh, um, but having called a city council member, um, <laughs> a, a police lieutenant called me back and, uh, um, I guess the, the place has, has been addressed hmm. since we, since we left town. So but, uh, but they entered the warehouse where we thought it was, uh, but there were no instruments. Oh man. Found. I don't know. But we're, we're, we don't we're know professional what, crime fighters now. We are professional <laughs> crime fighters. Some call us the Vince Herman band, but we call ourselves the uh, Big Vermin. Yeah. The Big, Big Vermin. Vermin. Very nice. And uh, yeah, we're out there to fight crime. Yeah. Chase vermin <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear that that happened, yeah. you know? Yeah, so we're, we're, we're kind of, you know, a bit. Well, whacked upside the head here tonight, man. But uh, you know we're gonna get to play music. And, cool. And you know know that there's a, a lot of people in the world that really are in really bad situations. You know, with mm. addiction and homelessness, and poverty and and inhumanity everywhere. That somebody has to be low enough to steal a banjo and an accordion. Jeez. Really, I mean, the joke goes you're supposed to be have three accordions in the in the car when you go back to it. You know. Yeah. Somebody broke into my car and my accordion was in there. What happened? Oh, there were three when I got back. <laughs> yeah, so these guys kind of hard up. You know, I guess comes down to stealing accordions. Yeah, I guess, I guess when, you know, it comes down to it, it's like, like you said, it's kind of it seems like an issue of, you know, people, the have-nots trying to... I mean, I would hope they didn't even know, you know, that's what they were doing. I would, you know, they're just kind of doing uh, something for the, the sake of it because they're down at the lowest point, you know. They probably don't even realize. But, um, you know, well, I'm sorry that happened. That's, yeah. I, I mean, my condolences for uh, your, your... So that's one of know, the things that happened on the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I've been doing this for 33 years and there's only been a one... One incident? One, two, two other, two, others. two other times in all those years that, that's happened so well, I remember David Grisman uh, I think it was last year he posted about something where you know his instruments were stolen right out of his car and oh, it really? just, yeah it just amazes me that oh. like you know people yeah, I, I don't know we're in good shape too Oof, yeah. yeah well you know yeah, uh, so, yeah. on, on other terms uh, you know I know you and Leftover Sam have been doing a lot of work this year and I know you put out a new album and I was just curious as to this venture with um, you know these yeah. wonderful folks what, what kind of are your goals with that and where you where you taking that is it is it yeah. are you just like, having fun doing this together or are you well, obviously that's, that's, that's definitely part of the part of the program but uh, no this is my idea of what country music is and it's bluegrass and Cajun and, and uh, Ballads and, and uh, foot stomping, honky tonking, bluegrass uh, <laughs> stomping, good time, you know, kind, right. of, yeah. kind of thing. And you know, I've, I've got a whole bunch of, of tunes that were uh, recorded uh, about about a year ago. The record was released, and it's all the result of uh, a lot of uh, time in Nashville and co-writing and things that, that I've done since moving there a couple of years ago. So uh, this band has taken the, you know, the songs from that record and then you know, a bunch of the new stuff and a bunch of tunes that these guys write too out, out on the road and having fun with it. Cool. So, if there is a favorite artist or song 
that you guys cover, one that, you know, when you do it, you just, I don't know, really enjoy it. Is there a particular, you know, one that comes to mind, you know, right off the rip? I don't know. A, 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 a cover? Um, man, I, I really like to do John Prine's Sweet Revenge. Uh, Robin Earl Keane's I'm Coming Home. You know, it's a great, great one we like to do. Um, yeah, like if my window faces the south, you know, an old swing tune, and, you know, stuff like that, you know, we, 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 we definitely go in, you know, down the swing route and some jug band kind of stuff, and, you know, yeah, we, we, you know, it's, but that's all what country music is to me, you know, western swing, jug band, Cajun, blues, you know, it's all country music to me, you know. Mm-hmm. So what was the first instrument you ever picked up? Um, drums, at, at probably at two, and then at three, my brother made me a plywood guitar with uh, rubber bands on it, you know, which I <laughs> rocked for a couple of years in there, and then, then got to taking piano lessons at probably uh, first grade, and then started guitar lessons in third grade. Wow. And, uh, yeah, nothing's changed in my life since, you know, <laughs> about three years old. Very cool. So the, uh, if you, uh, I noticed, I, I heard you talking about ballads and a lot, of, a lot of you know American, truly American music. Um, is, is there any like particular folklore you know or, or a stories that maybe you feel like kind of run deep, like when you you're writing or when you're 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 playing or you know stuff that really has impacted you and makes its way into your music. Yeah, um, I've you know written a couple of things about Appalachia and mountaintop removal, and, you know, you know, the destruction of Appalachia. You know, uh, I like to write songs about not working. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, I like to write songs about eating things and going places. Um, I've always wanted to travel, I guess. You know, so do a lot of traveling tunes. And uh, yeah, you know, whatever, whatever kind of comes out of the air that day. I, I like, I like catching tunes. You know, <laughs> Ian's a really good songwriter, a fiddle player, Ian Kraft. He, he's a great songwriter too. And that, the cool thing about Nashville is you just run into all these these folks. That are, you know, Ian plays drums and bass and steel pan and marimba and fiddle and banjo and yeah, you know, it's just. Everybody in Nashville does, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and in this band, I also get to be out with my son Silas, who's on guitar and mandolin, and, um, and that's that's one of the big thrills of doing this band too. You know, get, getting to work with Silas, he's, he's, he's proof of evolution. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I did not know that, so that's yeah. that's a cool little fact there. Yeah, I guess maybe pivoting. You know, from music for a moment. You know, film. I, I like to ask this question just because I feel like it's when you, when you're talking to a musician. And I'm a musician myself. It's like, for me personally, film has also. I'm a very visual, but I'm also very auditory at the same time. I would say I, I used to be a visual artist, so you know, I kind of have pivoted over to to the music industry, and I I really like that. But if you know, you had a. I guess if there's anything you could speak on in terms of like films you like, maybe movies you like, if oh, there's yeah. any that have impacted you, you know, yeah. deeply or, you know. True Stories, David Byrne, uh, is the most incredible piece of American visual poetry ever. Um, Down by Law with Jim Jarvis is a great film with Tom Waits and Roberto Benigni and John Lurie as the cast, you know, it's like... It's phenomenal. Um, man, I love uh, Kurosawa's uh, Dreams. Yeah, so that's that's one of my faves for sure. And, uh, you know, the Andy Griffith Show. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people don't call them films, but it was all done on film. Uh, so I love the Andy Griffith Show. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. And of course, Pee Wee Herman, you know, my cousin Pee Wee. Yeah, you, you did some great stuff. Very cool. Yeah. 
Well, uh, you know, wrapping it up, what, um, what do we have to look forward to for uh, kind of where is the, this project? And Or if you want to talk about yeah. salmon, you can. But, you know, yeah. where is this project kind of going? Or, you, you, you know, like... Well, oh, man, know. I've got all kind of sides of myself, you know. Salmon does does one kind of thing. I have a band with, called the High Hawks with uh, Tip Carbone and Chad Staley and uh, Adam Gruel and, and Brian. <coughs> oh, good God. <laughs> my, my brain is so trash from Brian Adams on, on bass and uh, Will Trask on drums. Uh, we're doing you know, some shows with that in the, in the coming year and uh, have an album coming out with that soon. And uh, I'll be, you know, looking to record another record sometime pretty soon, too. Uh, you know, so, uh, and, you know, we'll do that and uh, get out on the road and uh, with with the next record, too. You know, just keep going at it, you know. Yeah. Once once you turn 60, you realize, you know, you got any time to waste, though. No? Yeah. Absolutely. Get out there and play some tunes, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well... Thank you for spending some time with me. I yeah. really appreciate you taking some time yeah. out of you know your good, life to good time. Good time in the yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. I'm excited yeah, that I got to speak with you. I love your music. Yeah. I love everything you've been doing. I got to see you guys at the Ashland Armory. I believe you were sitting yeah. behind me prior to the show. I believe maybe you weren't. It may have been another guy with a big white beard. But I thought you were sitting back there. My girlfriend said something. She's like, you should go take something. And I was just, yeah. I was like, I don't. I'm not yeah. sure. And then next thing you know, you're on stage, and I was just yeah. like, so. Anyhow, that's yeah. That's I my used to live in Ashland. That's, uh, that was an old. Home yeah, you're from uh, Gold Hill. Are you? No, no. What's uh, your? No, Williams. Williams. Okay. So, yeah. so Oregon is your. I live in Powers right now. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. So, out in the boonies, but you know. Yeah. So no, I, I grew up in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Colorado, Oregon, and I'm in Nashville now. Very cool. Life's a good, good ride. Yeah. Enjoying the ride. Well, your story is definitely really inspiring. So, like I said, I really appreciate you spending some time with me. And, um, you know, I don't Thanks, suppose, man. Yeah, I suppose I don't need to say good luck tonight. Um, but, you know, <laughs> you probably don't need it. Well, we, we, we're lucky enough to still have enough instruments to do a show tonight, so... Well, I guess we're, we are in good luck then. Yeah. For that, I guess we're all grateful. All right. Thank you, man. Absolutely. Thank you.